what I've drawn here is a simple rod uh, here, and then this is the center of mass here. And then we apply a force F1 in this direction to the right. And this is position one, which I've, I've just noted here with a one. And so the acceleration of this point here is simply the uh, force over the mass. Right? So I think that's fairly straightforward uh, because we're applying this to the center of mass and we, we, get, we can understand how the center of mass will move. If you consider, though, for example, applying a force here, so this force F2 is, is the same force um, as force F1 that was down here. I've just, just labeled it with a 2 instead of a 1, but the, f the magnitude is the same. Um, and so when we apply the force up here in this direction instead of in the middle, um, the acceleration of point 1 is still given by force uh, here, F2, divided by the mass of the rod. And so the, the question is really, why is this? Why would the acceleration of the center of mass not change, even if you're applying a force in a different position? And that's what I want to try and um, talk a little bit about in this video. So let's go back to our, our original case. So we have the force in the center here. Let's add some additional forces. So in addition to the force in position 1, I want to add the same force in position 2 and the same force in position 3. And so if you calculate, well, what is the force in position 2? Well, you, you can call this as, as a sum of F1 plus F2 plus F3, so the forces in position 1, 2, and 3, because forces 1 and 3 will cancel, and so then this, this sum will, will, will work out on the left and the right. Let me add some additional forces, now forces 4 and 5 on the bottom. And what I want to do is to balance the f these three forces. So we have the force in position 2, the force in position 3, and the force in position 5. And I double, if I take two times this force, remembering all the forces are equal, then the force in position 2 plus two times the force in position 3 plus the force in position 5 uh, will all cancel out. So the net force on the system will be zero. And hopefully you, you can appreciate this because the this is symmetrical um, about the center of mass and this is pointing at the center of mass just in the opposite direction. If we split this out, so instead of writing two times the force in position three here, I'll just split these into two couples. So we have the force in position two plus the force in position three and then add to this the force in position 3 and the force in position 5. And then as a, as a next step, uh, there are a couple of steps involved here, but it'll all make sense in the end. Um, I want to highlight that, so this force position 3 and position 5, which are these here, they're equal and opposite to the, the net force produced by the force in position 1 plus the force in position 4. And so what we can do is we can substitute in here. So um, we, we take this, this negative here and, and put this in place of this positive couple here um, and then pull this across to the other side. So um, the force in position 2 plus the force in position 3, so that's these two here, is equal to the force in position 1 plus the force in position 4. Um, and th this is quite a, an, in, an important result because what this is essentially saying is that it doesn't matter where we're applying these forces as long as the forces, uh, the, the separation between them is constant. So to illustrate this, um, let's just focus on these two forces, force 2 and force 3. Um, and what, what we've just found is that if we shift these, um, let's say we shift it down here, the net force on the system is not going to change. We could shift it down even further and uh, again the, the net force on the system has not changed because the, the distance between the, this force in position 2 which is shifted down here and force in position 3 which is shifted down here, th this net distance has not changed. So the effect is, is going to be the same on the system. And th that's uh, quite a, an, an important characteristic. Here they're actually both symmetrical about the center of mass. And so what is going to be the net effect on the rod here? Um, and hopefully you can appreciate that it's going to simply rotate, right? The distance is the same and the forces are in opposite directions. So the net effect is that it's going to be rotating 
round like this. Um, there's going to, the center of mass is not going to move. This is going to stay here. But the rotation, th there's going to be a rotation motion. So let's just put these forces back to their original positions. So be because the position, again, this distance hasn't changed, because we, we just saw that having them in this position would create simply rotation with no translation, the effect of having them here is the same. So by applying a force in this direction and the same force in the center of mass position in, in the opposite direction, all you're going to have is rotation. You're not going to have any translation. And this is, this is quite crucial because it, let, let's go back to our original problem. We have our in, uh, original force in position one giving some acceleration of the center of mass um, at position one. Um, if we then go to our force in position two, let's take a look what happens here. So force in position two, we, we saw at the beginning, can be re rewritten like this, and we can split it into these two components, where we have force two plus force three in this kind of couple, plus this force in position one. And we've already seen, though, that this force three and, and two, or this, this couple here, only produces rotation. But when we're, when we're simply applying force two, what will happen is that there is some uh, rotation and also translation, right? Because there, there's, not, there's not a force operating in the opposite direction through the center of mass, as we saw here, right? Here, we had this force here, and so there was only rotation. Whereas here, there's no force here. So now we have here both uh, ro rotation and translation. And so if we write this in terms of this expression, then we can see that the translation of the system, which is monitored by the position of the center of mass, is given by the equivalent force at position one instead of position two. And so this is why when looking at the translation of an object, that we can treat the force on the object as being equivalent to the force going through the center of mass, even if we're ap applying the force elsewhere on the rod.